All right, so this is the second time the Red Clay Traveler is having to film this because I filmed the whole video earlier and it was good. It was a good one, all right? And I get home, I'm getting ready to edit it, put it up there so you wonderful subscribers and non-subscribers can watch it. And the audio is just trash. It didn't hook to my microphone. Don't know why. And uh, I didn't know that. And I checked my mics before I started filming and it still didn't do it. So I don't know what it was. So I'm gonna redo the video here. Try to explain a little bit about where we're at, what's going on. Uh, it's probably better anyway because earlier there were some linemen out here working on the power poles and for some reason they had music just cranked to 11. When I pulled in, they were listening to the Oak Ridge Boys. I was half expecting them to play some Wichita linemen, you know. I'm a lineman for the county, some Glenn Campbell action since they're down there doing lineman stuff. But uh, they were playing some Oak Ridge Boys and stuff, so I was, I was on board with that. Um, let's, uh, let me lower you down a little bit. We'll sit down and I'll give you... A, a brief rundown on what we've understood, possibly, maybe, and then we'll go from there. All right, sound good? The light's gonna be a little shoddy. I'm trying to add extra light, uh, but it's just a, it's a thing. Um, I might incorporate a little bit of the, of the footage from the earlier video, because there is parts of it that you can actually understand me, but I might put a little bit of that in this video, at which point you'll notice an audio change. And I'm just acknowledging it because people are very sensitive about audio, even as much as me breathing, all right? Anyway, all right, so last time we gathered here, we had an issue with the pressure plate. And I was explaining that I was under the impression that that pressure plate was manufactured incorrectly. I made it clear that I was not blaming Jeepster Man. I love Jeepster Man. I love what he's doing, everything he does. I like his stuff. Uh, I think he's a good supplier of parts. So I wanted to make that clear that I do not think it had anything to do with Jeepster Man. He supplies different parts from what I normally work on, but there is some overlap when you're doing engine swaps and stuff. But anyway, the clutch man that I told y'all about, I kind of went a little hard on the clutch man, but that's because, you know, he was, he was being difficult. He wouldn't tell us anything, no information, nothing. My brother went back over there to get the pressure plates, and he starts in again. It'll work. It's fine. It'll work. My brother says, well, no, it won't work. I've already told you it won't work, and I'm tired of talking about it with you. So apparently this guy got a little, he took it a little personal, and he decided to articulate what he meant by the fact that it wouldn't work. All right, and uh, what he meant by that it wouldn't uh, or, uh, articulate why it would work. Um, and uh, he says, you gotta understand that uh, this pressure plate is made different. Let's try this, Let's, this is real popular these days where you put your microphone on the end of something. Um, it, what he says is, is uh, you gotta understand this pressure plate is made different from other diaphragm pressure plates, okay? So what he means by that is it's kind of hard to explain. I would show you the pressure plates and, and show you why they're different. I have no idea what my brother did with them. They're somewhere, I don't know where they're at. I've looked in the shop, I don't see them. I looked in the house, I don't know where they are. I looked in one of his trucks, they're not there. I don't know where they are. I don't know. So they're somewhere, he got them. I just haven't had a chance to ask him what the hell he did with them. But anyway, so we'll just use our hands to explain what's, what's going on. All right, so let me put my microphone right here. All right, so basically, um, you might hear me breathing, so don't get offended. Um, on a modern diaphragm, the fingers of it are kind of angled out like this. On this extremely early diaphragm, GM style diaphragm that they only used in like the late 50s up into the middle 60s, the Dauntless. Those fingers are basically flat, okay? So what that means is, is when you push them with the throw-up bearing, it pushes a very minute amount is required, okay? A very small amount because they're already basically flat. So then you push them just a little bit more, bam, the clutch is actually and so what the clutch man says is that when I pushed this pedal in here and it moved that little amount that just stopped hard, I said it felt like a steel I-beam, you're pulling against I-beam and concrete. 
He says your clutch was already actuated. Now, I don't want y'all thinking that the Red Clay Traveler, as simple-minded as I am, was under the impression that I could just, you know, put it in here and the clutch pedal was going to act factory and all that. I knew it wasn't. I knew that. I just didn't think it was only going to move a millimeter before it stopped. I wasn't thinking that. I thought we'd have to adjust some linkages and stuff here or there, but we'd be able to get it done, right, that it wouldn't move literally nothing. So I was able to look this up a little bit on Novak, which is a phenomenal resource, by the way, for information about transmissions and engine swaps and bell housings and all kinds of stuff. Uh, Novak supports what the clutch man says. He, uh, the Novak says that it takes an extreme minute movement, and he gives the exact measurement, which I don't remember, and you can go look up on the Novak website. It's on there um, to actuate it. Now, later Dauntless has came with a three-finger Borgen Beck, all right? It's a different pressure plate design. It requires slightly more movement than the diaphragm style, but it's still relatively small, but it is more. So if I had the three-finger style, which I do, if I had the correct bell housing, which I do, but I don't know that it'll, it'll fit this transmission, um, I could use it, but it's not going to remedy the issue. The issue is, is I'm going to have to figure out a way to lengthen my linkage adequately, adequately enough so that I have normal pedal movement, all right? Um, I don't feel like buying a whole bunch of other stuff that, I, uh, that I'm going to have to experiment with and stuff, so my goal is, is to use the, the clutch kit that I got from Jeepster Man and figure out a, the most efficient way. It may not be the best way, but it might be the most efficient way to get this dog and pony show onto the next town, all right? Because I'm, I'm getting real tired of talking about driving the wheelies. I want to drive the wheelies, okay? You see it right here? It wants to be driven. Everybody wants I just want to drive it, all right? So let me get you over here. I'm going to take my microphone apart. There we go. It's disassembled. Um, and I'm going to show you as best I can what the hell I'm talking about, all right? So let me move my light source over here since we're working in this dungeon. It's like a Turkish prison in here. All right, we're going to set this up where maybe you can see something. We'll put it on our front differential here. All right. I already did this earlier, so this makes it easier since I get to redo it. Um... We're going to put you somewhere in this quadrant, like this. We're going to angle you down just a touch, like that, right there, bam, look at that, money. All right, so what does the Red Clay Traveler mean when he says that we got to figure out how to get length out of this? Here's your clutch pedal right here. This is the clutch pedal. If you notice, there's an excessive amount of distance that this has to travel before the inside of the pedal is touching the floor in the cab. All right, the bottom side of the pedal is touching the cab floor. We've got to account for all this. I'm not going to cut this pedal. I'm not going to move the bell crank because moving the bell crank is really not going to address this issue because we had to move this fork on the transmission so on the bell housing such a minute of distance. So moving my bell crank back it's still going to actuate, you know, the, that fork the same amount, and it's not going to remedy this. Okay, so basically, we got to account for this distance of travel into the floor. All right. Now, I have a few ideas on how to do that. None of which I particularly like, but I do have a few ideas. All right. Now, this. This is the bell crank. This is the factory Willis bell crank out of this unit. All right, and this lines up perfectly in its factory location with the fork on the, on the bell housing. So uh, the height of it, the whole line, everything's right. This is very nice. It hooks up to everything. It's, it's, I really don't see much of an issue with this. The issue is, is how much this has to move. So when I push that clutch, this goes back. So we're pulling that fork. We're not pushing it, we're pulling it. We've got to get this to pull back 
enough to compensate for all this travel and then actuate that clutch fork. All right, so we got a couple ideas kicking around. It's a relatively short distance factory, even on the T90, the distance between this bell crank and the fork on that, on that uh, uh, transmission is a relatively short distance. It's also a short distance on this one because that transmission is a T86, but it's dimensionally, it's a T90 case. That's what it says on the side of it. So it's sitting in the factory location of a T90, all right? So this distance is pretty much the same. So our issue is, is here's the fork, is right here on the shiny part. That's where the fork is. We're only got this little distance to work with. And somehow we've got to manufacture enough movement to accommodate this, this pedal movement. Because we can't drive it with the clutch not acting somewhat normal. Plus, if we push the clutch too hard, it'll push the fingers into the disc and grenade it. All right? It'll look like Tokyo Bay in there if you push those fingers into the disc. All right? And you don't want it to look like Tokyo Bay 1945. Nobody wants that. All right? So the point is put this shit together and not have to take it back apart right away. All right? So I've got a couple ideas, one of which I think is the most practical and will get us on the road. It may not be the best, but that's kind of the one I'm leaning to. All right. Basically, what I'm, what I'm thinking in my mind, all right, is make a rod like, you know, that bends on the end like this. It's smooth on the center. It's threaded on the end, okay? Put this back in its factory location. Bell crank, engine, everything's back in the Jeep. This is in its factory location, mounted to the frame, the other side of the transmission, just like I had it before, before I took all the shit back out, just like this. And basically make this lot rod so long that when I actuate the pedal, it free travels through the fork until it meets the appropriate distance, at which point it hangs, actuates this minute movement required to actuate the clutch. Now, that's going to mean that I'm going to have to modify this clutch fork. I'm going to have to make it where it captures this rod. And I'm going to have to put probably a brass or aluminum bushing in it so that the rod can slide in it. I'm going to want this rod to be slightly undersized for that bushing. I don't want it rattling around, but I don't want it super tight. It needs to be able to freely slide. At which point, it'll slide through all that as this pedal comes down. All right, as it comes down, that rod's going to slide through that fork. And then at this, probably about right in here, it'll start hanging on that fork. And then when you push all the way to the floor, it'll actually. I want it threaded on the end, obviously, because this is going to have to be adjusted, not only now for the initial hookup, but also down the road as the clutch wears. Uh, you're going to have to be able to tighten it up. So, uh, but what, by what I mean to modify the fork, I hope some of this is making sense. Maybe some of you are following me. This movement has got to be accounted for. All right. Uh, and then in the factory location, when the pedal's not pushed, this will be sit right here. The rod will be, be just like it should be, and it'll be sticking out of that fork whatever distance it needs to be, maybe four inches, six inches, whatever it is, sticking past the end of the fork. As you pull it, slides through that bushing I'll have to put in it, hangs at the end, actuates the clutch. You pop the wheelie, pop the clutch, give the tranny a spin, hit the BB town ramp, slide on in. Old home, fill her up, keep on a trucking cafe. Okay? So now we'll go over here and I'll show you this uh, fork as best I can. All right? It's not going to be easy because I got all this crap everywhere. Um, let me get you collapse down. I hate doing this while you're on the camera while I'm filming, but sometimes it's just going to happen. Um, now I'm going to get you down low enough where you can see what the hell I'm talking about. All right. So we'll get you down here like this. Get this angled a little bit. We'll get the light. Don't worry. Don't worry. Get the light. I'm getting it. All right.
basically this uh here's the uh tra whoop, there's the the transmission fork right here now this one ran a factory cable is what it did so it's already bowled out right there and by modifying it what i mean is is it's open it's open on the end right here right hopefully you can see this it's open on the end where the cables slip in and they'll have like a ball joint holds it all right what i'm proposing is basically just close off that end right there if necessary drill this out just ever so slightly make it round put a bushing in it maybe even solder or weld a bushing into it whatever it needs to be so it's cylindrical it can even stick out it doesn't have to line up exactly with this it can extend past a little bit it just needs to be a tube so the rod slides through it nice all right and then basically what I'm proposing, and like I say, I recognize this isn't what, what the breakaway traveler wants. It's not what he wants. It's just what what's probably gonna have to happen. Some variation of this. All right. Here's a, we'll pretend this is the clutch rod. All right. We'll pretend this bolt's the clutch rod. All right. You'll have this sticking past which we're limited by the bell housing right here so i don't we can only go about i don't know four three four inches past it so we're limited by that um so that could be an issue but anyway this is what i'm proposing this is the the clutch and in, in the, with the pedal not pressed when you press the clutch this will slide through that bushing slide through the bushing the pedal's going down on the floor and then it hangs right in here, actuates this clutch. And then when you let off the pedal, this slides back through that bushing, back over here, stops, pedals all the way at the top. We can fine tune that a little bit. Um, might even have to modify this bell housing ever so slightly to get this to stick past it, okay? This is my first thought, because I think this might be the easiest way to do this. The other option that I'm kicking around is a cable. That cable might end up being the actual solution because if that rod needs to be longer than that, I'd rather not modify this bell housing. So if the rod needs to be longer, there's only so much we can do with that. Um, hang on, let me get you all. There's only so much you can do with that. So, but a cable, I've got this all junked up over here with the axles and welders and all kinds of crap. Um, wow, y'all were crooked. All right. Um, if I had a cable, you just, we'll just, uh, we'll just, we'll just pretend this is the cable. Um, this is a, this is a snap on light. Anyway, um, Imagine you've got the bell crank on this side. You've got the clutch fork on this side, okay? Um, basically, there we go. Um, basically, what I'm saying is, is you'd have this cable. It'd be hard to fix on the fork side. It would have to have some adjustment of some kind, but basically, it doesn't free travel through it. Hard attached on the bell crank side. As you tight, as you push the clutch in, that cable stretches out, opens up, tightens, pulls a clutch. That's also a possibility. Um, I think that interjects some other issues, but it is possible. Um, okay, so we got that. That's a possibility. And then the last possibility. In, in this is all in an effort to work with what we currently have. All right, that's the main thing. Um, the other possibility is something like this. This is a this is a timing chain right here. Some of them have chains. Uh, some things do. So say you had this timing chain, use this actual chain. I mean, it, it's strong. It'd be fine. Cut this timing chain up. 
And on one end, you have a fitting that attaches the bell crank. On the other end, you weld a, a, uh, a threaded nut, threaded bolt, so that you have uh, adjustment on this side. It's hard to fasten the bell crank on this side. When you're not running, the, when the pedal's not pushed in, and you got the chain hanging slack like this. And then when you push the clutch, chain tightens up, raises up, actuates your clutch. That could end up being an answer. You know, we might could end up using the dauntless timing chain to fix the dauntless clutch action. Um, that's a possibility. Um, none of these are particularly appealing to me, but I'm, I'm running out of time and running out of money. Um, I'm going to have even less money here in the future because we got big things coming your way, things you're going to like, things I think you're going to like. Um, it's going to be a big deal for the channel. It's a big deal for me and Brittany. It's going to be it's it's going to be good. It's scary. It's scary, and it's a lot of stuff going on. Um, it's going to cut into the budget quite a bit. All right, but it's all going to be good in the end. All right, and uh, so I want to get this done with what I have without having to spend more money right now because I'm not going to have a lot of money to spend on this kind of stuff. And I've got most of my components here. Surely I can cobble something together. Men used to do this engine swap back in the 70s without any of this crap. There wasn't a Novak to, you know, online resource to, to read about. So this engine swap was done in, in GPWs, MBs, M38s, CJ3As, 3Bs, uh, 2As, all kinds of stuff, all right? Um, with tighter frame rail, shorter distances, essentially the same bell crank system, but you know, smaller, tighter areas. If they could do it, surely to God, the Red Clay Traveler could figure it out. So it just, it's just gonna take a little bit of time to get it figured out. But uh, basically what we need to do is, is reassemble this, put it back in the truck, take a bunch of measurements, try some different stuff. It might take two or three different attempts to get it to work. It's gonna be frustrating as hell. I know that last video I was kind of Debbie Downer and all that kind of stuff. I, I, I didn't mean to. It's just sometimes that's the way it is. Like I say, this is reality. It's going to get you down sometimes, but this is just the way it is. If you're doing stuff like this, this engine swap has been done a lot. But the fun thing is, is there's no resources about how it was done. There's a lot of stuff that's on forums that are from 25 years ago. They're talking about things that I'm not even dealing with. If you search for a Dauntless V6 swap in a Willys truck, Last time I checked, I'm the only guy that's trying to do it. I don't know that there's any other resources. If there is, I haven't seen them. If you know where they are, tell me. I'd love to know. If I knew some other feller that had a, a Willys truck or a wagon that had a Dauntless in it, I could ask him how they hooked up this linkage. I know there's one guy that reached out to me on my Facebook page. He sent me some pictures of a Dauntless engine that he was putting, I believe, in a Willys wagon, a real nice setup. I don't know if he's gotten this far in it. If you know, I could run it by him. If I can find his contact, if I still got his message, I might shoot him a message asking what he did on that linkage system. Um, but as of right now, I'm working in the dark. Other than John Doe, who's helping me quite a bit, but he's in Kansas, I believe. So you know, it's not like he can help me firsthand. He's helping me a lot over the phone. I enjoy talking to you. I'm sorry, I missed your calls. I'll try to get back to you in a few days. But, but there's a lot going on. Um, basically. What I'm saying is, is I wasn't trying to be Debbie Downer the other day. There's just a lot of stuff going on. There's good stuff going on. Um, obviously, there's a lot going on in the country going on. There's hurricanes and everything else y'all all know about. Y'all see it just as good as I do. What I'm getting at is there's people that's got a lot bigger problems than my Dauntless engine won't fit in my Willie's truck, okay? I mean, like, I, I, to me, that's a big deal. But I still got a house. I still have food and stuff. There's people right now in North Carolina, in South Georgia, in Florida, all over the place, Southern Virginia, East Tennessee, that are in a real bad shape, all right? So always remember to pray for them. Florida just got plowed by another hurricane. There's allegedly another one behind it. So, you know, what I'm getting at is I don't always, I'm not good. I talked about this in my other video. I'll say it again now. I'm not good at counting my blessings all the time. I'm real depressive by nature. And so I'm extremely prone to only look at problems and only see problems and I never think about anything else that's going good. There's a lot of good news coming our way that I'm not going to tell you about right now. 
I can tell you it's going to be good for the channel. I'm going to tell you it's going to be good for me and Brittany. I can tell you it's going to be good for the longevity of the channel and everything that I want to do and everything that Brittany wants to do. But I'm not going to tell you any more than that. That's all you get to know, all right? You'll know about it in the next three weeks or so. You'll know in detail about it. But in the meantime, I've got a lot of blessings happening. Brittany is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. I said this in the previous video. If she doesn't believe it, she can watch it, all right? But I get unbelievably overwhelmed at times that I forget how much God has blessed me. And then I, I dwell on other things, things that aren't going right, legitimate things that aren't going right. There's all kinds of problems with our country. There's things going on around the world. There's all kinds of things to, to spiral out all over. But there's endless things going right. And it's always easier to, to complain about the things that are going wrong, but there's endless things going right. And a lot of things are going right for me right now, way more than they ever have in my life. And I'm trying to force myself to remember that because for long stretches of my life, I couldn't tell you anything that was going right. I couldn't even make one up. I don't have to make them up. I've got Brittany in my life. I've got other good things coming my way. I've got a job that I don't hate. I'm making pretty good money at it. I, you know, I'm, there's a lot of things going well. The YouTube channel's going well. So I'm not, what I'm trying, I'm not trying to give an ultra pep talk, but I'm just saying there's a lot of good things going uh, for me. And, uh, and what I'm saying is I'm trying to keep myself in context because there's so many other things, so many people struggling with horrible things going on. Uh, just always remember to pray for them. Obviously, if you can help them with, with food or money, like all kinds of Americans are doing, there's millions of people. I'm sure there's people around the world that are sending money to help these people. It's phenomenal. If you can't do something like that, don't ever think that praying for them isn't a wonderful thing. Praying, you, know, you should never underestimate praying what it does. I don't care if you believe in praying or not. It's an insurmountable, wonderful thing that's a, it, for you to sit down and pray for people you don't know to ask the Lord to help them, it's an, in, an unbelievable thing, and it does make a difference despite what people want to say. So if you can't do anything, just pray for these people. And, you know, if you can't do that, then donate your money, donate, uh, donate your time. You know, do something if you can. Uh, all of it makes a difference. Some of it more than others. Some of it always makes a difference, and I'm, I have full faith that praying makes a difference. Um so just remember that. Remember these people. I know y'all are all aware of it, but it's easy to get distracted by the latest headline that's going on. People have already forgotten all this kind of stuff that's already happened. Uh, large sections of North Carolina are missing right now. There's all kinds of damage in Florida. There's horrible damage from tornadoes in South Georgia, right? There's all kinds of stuff. So just when, what I'm saying is, is when you get in the mood that the Red Clay Traveler stays in most of the time, just trying to do an assessment. Your house isn't flooded. You didn't lose your car. You didn't lose your job. Things really aren't that bad. Even if you're running tight on money, at least you got something. And uh, there's a lot of people right now that don't even have that. So I am the regular traveler. I love you all deeply. Deeply love you. We're going to get the dollars figured out. It's going to take a little bit of time. It's not going to be on the time scale I want it to be, but neither has any of it. But the point is, is I've got a Willys truck, and I've got a Dauntless that can go in it. I'm just going to have to figure it out. Uh, I'm hoping to get it figured out sooner than later, but if it ends up taking another three or four months, then it'll take another three or four months. But we'll get it done, is what I'm getting at. No, the Brickley Traveler ain't giving up on nothing, all right? Nothing's going away. It's all going to be the willies all the time. It's always it. I love you all deeply. Hit the subscribe button. Smash it. Here's the scrap. Smash it, all right? Hit the like. Hit the share. Go watch all my other videos. I might be a little lax on posting videos here soon because I'm going to have a lot of stuff going on that you will find out about later. Um, so there might be a little bit of gap here. I'm not going anywhere. Don't panic. I'm going to do my best to film some in the interim periods. And uh, keep watching. I've got almost 200 videos. Go watch them. I guarantee you I haven't seen them all. I know you haven't. Go watch them. I am the Red Clay Traveler. I love you all deeply. And remember, Willis for life. All right? We're going to get the Dauntless in there. And eventually we're going to have lighting, and we're going to put the engine in there, and the clutch pedal's going to work. Willie's for life. Get it? Yeah, buddy.